Learn to make a fully working Battle Royale game you can play with friends using my Udemy course. Try for $13.99 using the link in the description. Wow, it's me, I'm back. And we're up to episode 3, which means that I've almost set a new record for the most episodes without actually quitting the series. Wish me luck as I continue forward making these great videos. In the last video, we created the most advanced moving ball the world has ever seen. But how did we achieve such perfection? We did so thanks to the power of components, the building blocks that make up actors. In this video, we'll add movement to our camera, and we'll talk about how it actually moves around and does all the crazy shit that it does. Now before watching this video, I would highly recommend that you do the loop-de-loop -loop and then pull so that your shoes are look. Oh, sorry, no, that's out of Spongebob. Um, oh, I just wanted to say that during this video, I do make a bunch of mouth noises, probably because I'm sitting too close to the microphone. I won't do this in any future videos, I will get this issue fixed, but um, since I can't be bothered re-recording this video, you're probably just going to have to put up with it. Isn't it great being a subscriber to me? Aren't these videos such high quality? <laughs> okay, so we're back inside here from our last video. And in this one, we're going to show you how to add movement to the camera, among some other things. In the last video, we went into C++ classes and dragged our sphere pawn into the level. So you can see here's our sphere pawn that we had. And then we clicked on static mesh and we set the static mesh up to be a sphere. So if I type sphere, uh, I think it's like that one. Right, and then, and then if you type in possess, you can test the pawn out if you click on this and then select player zero. This is what we had in the last video. You can move the, the pawn around and as you can see, it's very good and it's very fun to play as. But let's make it a little bit more fun by adding um, camera movement. How do we add camera movement? So I'll show you how to add camera movement, but I just want to show you one quick thing and that's the blueprint system. People get a lot really confused about like what blueprints do and stuff like that, but let me show you one really quick use for blueprints. So here's my sphere pawn, and you notice I had to do all the work. I had to click on static mesh, I had to select sphere, and do a bunch of setting up and stuff, and eh, it's kind of, it's a, it's a bit gross to have to do that, right? So what we can do is we can right click on the sphere pawn and then create a blueprint based on the sphere pawn. And I'll just put this in the content folder, and I'm going to call this BP, meaning blueprint, and then underscore sphere pawn. And now I have a sphere pawn, but he's kind of like, what I'm making here is like a preset. So let's click on static mesh, and we'll select sphere for the static mesh. There it is. I don't like that one. There's this other one here. It's smaller. Let's, let's use that one. It's nicer. Anyways, so what that does is now I can drag these sphere pawns into the level. So now I skip the step of having to set up all that stuff, because that's kind of annoying. The other advantage to blueprints, yeah, sure, it's like a nice preset. It's a nice way of setting stuff up. But the other really cool thing about these blueprints is that they have their own scripting language. Like we can do we can do all the stuff we can do in C++, we can do it here inside what is called the event graph. But this is a C++ course, so we probably won't touch on blueprints much. Just know they're really powerful and you can build your whole game of blueprints depending on the game. Um, I mean, obviously, games that require a lot of performance, you really don't want to be too reliant on blueprint. But you could technically make a, a whole game in, in blueprint. So anyways, let's talk about how to set up camera movement. And, um, and we're going to do a couple of things here to, to make this work. But anyways, let's go into our code here. And you can see that I'm still running my project. So let's just click this little stop debugging. And unfortunately, what we're doing in this video is really, really similar to what we're doing in the last video. So you're probably not going to learn that much more. But you remember we had move forward and move right. We're going to set up these axis events again, but just for turning this time. So turn by amount and also look up by amount and we have these input access events that are set up to do all this stuff for us so let's go into the sphere pawn.cpp class and oh oh i forgot i forgot about this people are telling me they can't read stuff so we'll make that bigger there you go i always forget to do that anyways so um we're going to go to player input component and we're going to bind an axis the access to bind is turn 
And if you go back into the engine, you can go into the inputs menu and you can verify that it is called turn, just like we verified these ones before. But I know it's called turn. And we're going to bind that to sphere pawn turn, which is that event that I just made. And we're going to do the exact same thing. This time we're going to do it for look up. And we also need to have this as look up. And right click on turn, create implementation, right click on look up, create implementation. If you don't want to click on create implementation, then just type that out yourself. But I don't like typing that out, so that's why I do it that way. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to enable turning, but I want to explain how I'm achieving this. The pawn gets possessed by something called the controller. The controller, as you might kind of know it, is the thing that, that is controlling the pawn. It's the part of the pawn you can't see, right? So the pawn, you can see it moving through the world, but think of the controller as kind of like the spirit that is taking control of the pawn. And the controller, the spirit, has its own rotation, and we use that rotation generally to control the rotation of the camera and a bunch of other stuff too if you want. But just know that your controller, even though you can't see it in the world, it has a rotation. So what I'm going to do is here inside of turn, I'm going to add controller your input. Your means uh, sort of like left to right rotation. And we're going to add controller your input amount. We then have this other thing look up and we're going to add controller pitch input, which is like up and down. And that's all we're doing. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say we want our pawn, the thing being controlled, we want that to have the same rotation as the camera or as the controller, the spirit taking control of the pawn, right? So um, the way that we do this is there's a couple of flags inside of this pawn class that can be set. Uh, B, use controller rotation your, just say that's true. And B, use controller rotation pitch, just say that's true as well. That's all you have to do. So we're adding this your input and then we're basing the pawn's rotation off that. So as these values change, then um, the rotation of the pawn's going to change. So basically, wherever we're looking will be our rotation, and then we can move around. And um, we'll do one other thing as well, just to just to make this cooler. But anyways, this this should work. So if you click on local Windows debugger, we can actually try this out. Okay, so I hope you still have your sphere pawn blueprint that you made. But if you don't, you can just go back to the start of the video where I made him and then just recreate that. So I've got my BP sphere pawn here and I'm going to drag him into the level. And in the details panel, we're going to search for possess. Set that to play a zero so that we can control it. And check this out. When I move my mouse, it will change the rotation. So now we're like a big flying orb that can move around the level. Now, I'd love to act like we're really great coders, but all of this movement, we didn't really make any of it, did we? I mean, this is all just harnessing the power of components. And to be honest, as the programmer, you probably want to know like how this is all working, right? If you're, if you're a programmer, you're probably a little bit intrigued. You know, how is this possible? And we'll talk about that as well. But I just want to show you that if I move my camera, it can clip into walls. And that's not a good look. And you know how I've been talking about components? Oh, components, they're so great. You know, the pawn movement component will get your pawn moving around the level without writing any code. And just use components. They save you so much time. But components are great. Well, there's actually a component that will stop a ca uh, camera clipping into the wall. And that's called the spring arm component. Basically, the goal of it is if anything is coming between the player and the camera, just move the camera so it doesn't go through the wall. So let's add the spring arm component um, to our pawn so that this annoying issue stops happening. Okay, I'm back inside of my code and we're going to add this spring arm component that I've been talking about. So the first thing we do is we're going to go to sphere-pawn.h and we'll just do the same thing that we've been doing for all of our other components. Basically just copy this, paste this in here, and just say instead of you camera component, just say you spring arm component. And I'm going to call this camera arm. So you can think of the spring arm component as kind of like an invisible component 
and you can attach things to it like for example the camera and if it detects a collision it will just move whatever's attached to it to a better place that's kind of the best way i can describe it you'll see when it's in the when it's in the game it'll make so much more sense um, and also what you need to do is you need to copy this floating pawn movement and change floating pawn movement to uh, spring arm component so that's where the spring arm component is you need to include that what we're going to do is we're going to create the spring arm um, and i called it camera arm and we need to create that you spring arm component the name is going to be spring or camera spring arm i suppose and we're going to attach the spring arm to so set up attachment and we want to attach it to the static mesh now this is really important the camera was previously attached to the static mesh but the camera arm will only move stuff out of the way if it's attached to the camera arm. So we need the camera to be attached to the camera arm. So you need to change this part to camera arm. So we're creating a, a, a camera arm, we're attaching it to the static mesh, and then we're attaching the camera to the camera arm. You must also set the length of the camera arm. And uh, we can do it in C++ or we can do it inside of our blueprint. Um, in the editor and, and the, it doesn't really matter but i'm just going to say target arm length equals 500. Um, also a little c++ thing is you might want to put point o f the f is just saying that it's a float right this is a float value basically um, and i usually get rid of the zero as well so that's that's a way you can do it it's just saying this is a float value basically you might have noticed i've been putting those little f's there um, anyway, so yeah, we're setting the camera arm's length to 500. This means that the camera is going to be 500 units behind the player. So if I make this value bigger, then it'll be further away. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and test this out. And while we're sort of waiting for this to compile, um, I've been telling you guys all this stuff like, oh, you know, you, you add input vector and that makes it move. But what is this doing behind the scenes? Well, because Unreal Engine is not, closed source we can take a look at all this great stuff that's going on so let's right click on floating pawn movement here and click on oh, right click on floating pawn movement and then go to definition and you guys are obviously beginners to unreal you're not going to be understanding all of this right now this is this is fairly complicated stuff that's going on but if we right click here and then uh toggle the header file so we can look at it this is what's actually going on behind the scenes this is all of the code all of the collision checking um, all of the velocity handling and all that stuff like that that's actually moving our player around so you can go and look at the code that's doing this the best part about this is that unreal has like tested this code hundreds of times right and what that means is you can be absolutely sure that your movement will not have a bunch of bugs in it because you're using the power of the floating pawn movement component and this has been tested by Epic so many times. This code is really sound. It's really efficient. It's not a lot of bugs and it's just really easy to use. So that's awesome. That's, that's, that's why I would recommend wherever you can harness the power of the engine. It is there to be harnessed. Also, because the camera is attached to the camera arm and the camera arm is 500 units long, we can actually get rid of this line of code where we place the camera behind the player because by attaching it to the camera arm and making the camera arm 500 long it'll it'll now be 500 units back as you're about to see okay let's take a bp sphere pawn let's drop them into the level and check it out there it is so so this red line is the spring arm now you can't see the red line in the game or anything this is just used to visualize the spring arm because since you can't see it it's nice to be able to visualize it and um, we're going to go into possess and player zero just so we can test this out. Okay, check that out. Isn't that cool? So, so when my camera is, is sort of colliding or the spring arm's colliding, the spring arm's going to adjust the position of my camera so it doesn't go through walls. And this should work with anything as well. Like, yeah, when I get up to these walls, it, it will just not let me inside the walls. So that's a really cool way to add some... I guess polish to your character and it solves a pretty common problem 
there's a, a bunch of um different stuff you can do with the spring arm by the way if i open up my bp sphere pawn in the list oh we have to click on open full blueprint editor but in the list of components it has the static mesh the camera arm whatever and in the details panel you can change all this stuff here so for example um, if i click on camera arm there's an option called use pawn control rotation um, so you might click on that and then you might then go into the sphere pawn and turn these off. So we, we enabled these from C++, but you can uncheck these to unenable them again. And now the camera can move around the pawn and the pawn can still move around with that free camera movement. So there's, there's a lot of different customization that you can do in the details panel as well. Um, you could also change some things like, for example, um, if I go to length, there's that value target arm length. You might think, hey, you know, I want the I want the target arm to be a bit longer. So what you can do is change this value to like 2,000, and now the the camera's all the way back there. So um, a lot of these values can be tinkered with, and you can get some different effects that way. And check it out. So now the camera's a lot further back. Um, but yeah, basically, I just want to talk a little bit more about components, and we also learned how to use blueprints in this video as a little bonus. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, in the next video, I don't know what we're going to talk about because I haven't thought that far ahead. But anyways, uh, <laughs> thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys later.